Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Linda Armstrong and Rita Giganti. Today is Friday, June the 19th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time, and wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And on this uh, beautiful Friday, uh, last in a week of beautiful days, and it's uh, been stretched out over how many weeks now? We've had a few weeks of this gorgeous weather. Oh, my uh, God. That's awesome. I mean, Lin- Linda was just, we had to drag her inside. She didn't want to come in. You know? <laughs> and I can't say I blame you. Yeah, I was <laughs> busy, busy working out there. Oh, gorgeous out there. Uh, but on this beautiful Friday, we uh, want to wrap up the week by talking about something that Rita found. Rita, you, Rita, you found this one, right? Not Linda. Yeah, I was yeah. Um, I was watching a movie, and it, there was a controversial piece with, uh, uh, you know, a religious a piece of it. And they mentioned the 10 commandments and, you know, because I'm Catholic, I know them. So I, I went looking it up. Cause I'm like, I, I didn't think they had the right order to it. And just for fun, I, you know, went online and then I saw the 10, the native American 10 commandments. And I thought, well, this is like something everybody should hear um, and read. And there, there are um, a few I want to say a few different ones for the Native American, but very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a very similar uh, sayings. So um, I, I know Linda has them in front of her, right? Yes. Yeah, I've got them here too. And it, the, the fact that they're all a little bit different suggests to me this is not something that any particular tribe necessarily put out. But, yeah, they, uh, they don't show um, a particular tribe, right. but I, I just liked how they honored um, you know, Mother Earth and, um, and you know, it talks about uh, giving thanks to the great spirit, which they consider God. They're calling great spirit God. And uh, it's, it's a great, um, it's a great, it's a great way of thinking. Not that we should throw out, do not kill and do not steal. <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it's a great way of thinking of, you know, that aspect um in a different light, you know? Mm-hmm. So, because what they're saying anyway, and what people will see is that you honor your neighbor, the earth, the great spirit, you know, all of that. So kick it off, Linda. <laughs> all right. So I'll read the first one. We can chat about that. Yeah. Says, the earth is our mother. Care for her. Which is quite different from what you hear with the biblical Ten Commandments. This is that this is like starting right off with how all of these, as they're written out, are written in a very affirmative way. And it's yes. not like don't do this, don't do this. It's more right. like here is what's valuable. Here's right. What, here, here's what's really you know worthwhile, worth thinking about, worth applying. Exactly. And I, and I like that just right out of the, of the gate. It just it just starts in a very I, I tend to avoid the words positive and negative, but I'll use it in this case in a very positive tone. Mm-hmm. And there's no coincidences, right? I wasn't even thinking about the topic when I was been outside doing all kinds of work in my yard and I was walking around and I'm like, with every single step I take, I'm channeling this beautiful universal energy, healing energy, and I'm sending it right down into the earth. Right. Because that's something we can all do. And anybody can do that. You don't have to be an energy healer. You just call on that beautiful energy of the universe and send it down to the earth. Mm-hmm. Like the earth, we never think a lot. And I don't know how much, maybe some people do, but I bet you next to nobody thinks about sending healing to the earth. Right. A lot, we want to heal from the earth, right? We want to ground ourselves. We want to mm-hmm. draw that beautiful energy up, but we should also send her energy. Sure. Especially with all the changes going on these days. Um, she could use it, right? Yeah, she tends to get bombarded with our negative crap, you know. So when when you're channeling from spirit, if you're doing like even a group meditation or something, at some point you can just direct the energy uh, to Mother Earth to amp up her energy. I mean, listen, she's got endless energy. This is not, you know, she doesn't not know how to regenerate herself or heal herself. But in Thanksgiving, we can do that. And that just creates a very uh, unique and beautiful relationship between you and Mother Earth. So, you know, when you want to cultivate that, I mean, that's, it's just, you know, the way it should be, just like you do with spirit, you'd want to do it with Mother Earth. Yeah. So I like the way you said that in thankful, I think you said in thankfulness. Yeah. 
yeah, let's give back. Who's to say, I mean, everybody loves to have some love, right? Or some healing or something sent to them. Sure. So why, why should the earth not receive it and only have to give, right? Right. And then you can get this communion between you and the earth of this, of this giving and receiving back and forth. And that only just makes that bond or that awareness of you and the connection you have to the earth even better, I would say. Right. And then you tend to get more synchronicities when that happens, just like you do when you connect to spirit. So, and you know what else I was thinking about too? And I know you already do this a lot, Rita. I've been doing it more and more. It also connects you to all the elementals. Yes. You're in their environment and you're giving to that. So giving to the earth is a way of giving to those energies that are like very close to the earth. Right. The elementals of Go ahead, hon. It's a great way of reminding ourselves that uh, it isn't just life, and, and Earth is teeming with life. I mean, not just human life and animal life, insect life, plant life. I mean, it, it, there's just life all over the place. But uh, one of the primary concepts that we discuss in LOA circles and in, in, in general in energy circles is the idea that everything is energy. We, all, all of um, physical existence is energy manifested into physical form. Right. And that means it's all drawn from source energy. So from that perspective, it also makes tremendous amounts of sense to love every one and everything because it's all part of that same source energy continuum. You know, and I kind of feel like people can't even debate that anymore. I think it's like <laughs> becoming a common knowledge that we are everything is energy. Everything's made up out of energy. Yeah. People didn't look at it maybe in the way that we're looking at it in the spiritual sense, but or didn't used to, but I think more and more people are coming to that because you'll hear things people saying, and, and you know, they don't really know the whole big picture because you can just tell by the way they lead their lives. They're more, you know, living from their mind, but yet they can accept that part of it. Like, mm-hmm. like well, energy, I got to change my energy or, you know, this makes me feel good or however they want to say it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big deal I mean, that, it's shown from a scientific view, from a mathematical view, um, I mean, and I hated those subjects, but now, <laughs> now I know. Now they're coming back to haunt you. <laughs> yeah, because I just wasn't the greatest at it. But now now I understand the value of that when mm. I look at the deeper piece of things. So, um, you know, am I ever going to use algebra? Probably not. But the universe knows how to use numbers and, you know, formulas mm. and all kinds of things to, to get what it needs. So it's it, you just have to respect it and honor it, you know. Oh, Jeffrey, yeah. Jeffrey shared something in the uh, live stream that I wanted to what? share. He, first of all, he uh, said that uh, that we're keeping him inside as well, but he appreciates the company. <laughs> uh, and he also says he's been burning some cedar, and he says, I am happy others are learning the ways of the indigenous people, humans and non-human, physical and non-physical. Uh, and in a time where there's a lot of racial tension going on, it's nice to have a, 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 a kind of a more positive way of looking at the differences that there are among people, yeah. um, just appreciating what those differences are. And, and uh, Native peoples are, are certainly in that category. And, and hey, so, okay. Go yeah, no, no, go. I was going to introduce some number two, but if you have something more to say on that. No, I just think that, um, you know, I like reading about the Native Americans because they were so close to the earth. They understood Mother Earth to me the best. And they knew how to live, you know, with her and on her and respected her. And um, oh, somebody's ringing my doorbell. <laughs> Give me two. <laughs> yeah, I go with number two and I'll be right back. <laughs> you get the door, we'll get number two. <laughs> uh, the second one is honor all your relations. Which is everything. All your relations, which is like, you know, right before we just said something about honoring whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, is there you anything? You have to talk about people, you know, like oh, getting yeah. along, right? I mean, is there anything we don't have a relationship with? Any person, any place, anything? I mean, I have a relationship to my crystal. I have a relationship to my glasses. I mean, you have a relationship to everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything. So it's, a, it's almost an extension of number one, really, when you think about it. Yeah. Number two, read it. Honor all your relations. Yeah. Well, I mean, my God, that could be like to anything and anyone, right? Right. Yeah. To your body, to, you know. This is, this is, I think, even critical in what we're talking about now with all the racial tensions. It's like, just accept that we're all 
here, we're, like we're, we're all the culmination of one beautiful energy we call love. We're all the culmination of that, right? So we may have differences and we may have opinions and we may like different things and, you know, but if we could just accept that, we wouldn't be where we are. And honestly, I don't know how we're here in 2020. This is like, come <laughs> on. But I feel like we haven't, that's the one area that we still need to grow. Yeah. And I think a big part of that is people just have to let go of judgment. Cause when you're in judgment of someone else, of how they live their life or what they do, how they do it, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yep. You can feel even just when I'm saying that the energy shifts, it's not like you're not being in communion with, I mean, it's like, can, can we're infinite beings. Why right. can't infinite being allow someone to have a point of view that, ha- that you think might be out of stupid or crazy, but it's their point of view. Right. Honor that without right. having to have it affect us. Right. Well, that's where the whole self judgment comes in. Cause when we're doing our own self judgment, we're automatically going to judge others. So it's, it, you know, we, we're, we're learning big lessons here at this point on this earth. We've, we've been learning all along, but, this piece is really now at the forefront and it needs to be finally, you know, um, settled because we need to move on as a race, you know, and we're even, you know, we call ourselves like, you know, um, Chinese or black or this or that. We're still all one, regardless of what you want to call yourself or, you know, what you look like. We're still all one. We come from that one place. So, so, We'd be boring if we were all the same. No kidding. So, so number three tells you how to do that. So number three says, open your heart and soul to the great spirit. So when you can open yourself and feel that energy and connect to that, you're not going to see everything is so separate because when you can feel like, like, you know, like when you're meditating and you just feel your connection where you don't even know where your body ends anymore. You're just it. You're it. Right. Just it. Right. Because everybody else just it it so right you can look at it from that so say spirit right from from opening your heart just like i said open your heart and soul to the great spirit to that unity that love that oneness right exactly i think it's one of the great things about um the way law of attraction is taught that we are all part of the same source energy we are all drawn from source energy we are source energy we are creators right. of source energy and that means we are connected in a way that's more permanent, that's more eternal than any other connection that can possibly exist. There, are, there are no others ahead of that one. That is the primary connection. Right. And as long as that's the case, I mean, all the other distinctions start to become relatively meaningless by comparison to that. That's that's the big one. That's the you one that. That's that. true. What proves it is little kids. Little kids don't see things as separate. No, things not as at all. Or race or religion or whose house is bigger. It's only what they pick up from those people outside of them that starts to condition that and then starts to mold you to where you have all these it's, different programs. It's all what you're taught. Yeah. It's all what you're taught no, because no. we're not born that way. Right. Yeah. We're certainly not born that way. Although the good so. news is we also grow, like you were saying earlier, Rita. And when we grow... That means, among other things, learning or relearning what it was that we already knew, that we were taught away from, so to speak. <laughs> isn't that isn't that the kicker? We're learning right. everything we already know. We're relearning. <laughs> and sometimes we're just, I don't know, stunad. Like, we don't get it right away. You know, it's got to well, be. <laughs> we gotta Richard have to... Bach, who wrote uh, Illusions, among other books, back in the 1970s and 80s, really said it well in that book, Illusions. He says... Um, learning is remembering what you already know. Teaching is reminding others that they know it too. Doing is demonstrating that you know it and that we are all learners, t- teachers, and doers. That's right. At one yeah. point or another in the life. Yeah. That's right. And that's yeah. a great, I love that. That's a Oh, yeah. That's awesome one of my favorite books. That's... I love that. It, it, the thing I loved about Box book is his books, actually, is that he taught all these ideas, but he managed to do it with fiction. So it was a story. You know, yeah. it's like, what, what's going to happen next in the story? But you're learning all these concepts while you're reading it. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was That's great. Ahead of his time in that sense. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so what's next on the list here? 
Number four, all life is sacred. Treat all beings with respect. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I think we just said that. <laughs> it's more of the same. Yeah. But you're looking at it as honor relationships, open your heart to the great spirit, all life is sacred, treat all beings with respect. It's just like grabbing at more pieces of right. more in that say unity consciousness and including the earth and the universe and the people and the plants and the animals. The animals, right. The bugs that you you know that you want to kill on a daily basis when they're in your home. Like they're all a part of yeah. you know there's another aspect to respect too that often gets overlooked and that is respecting that with which we disagree that yeah. which we have trouble that's the whole thing of no judgment you right. you allow that person to live their life and be be their way yeah yeah unless it was harm to someone then they maybe have to help them to tone it down or whatever it is but mm -hmm. uh, yeah it, it, it can be a challenge, but it's also an opportunity because whenever we do make strides toward, toward not, it, it's beyond tolerance. Abraham made a good uh, comment about that in one of their uh, email quotes. They send those, those daily reminder emails out and one of them touched on this. And I, I don't remember what the exact quote was, but the gist of it was it's beyond tolerance that we're talking about here. What we're talking about is true acceptance accepting as it is, as they are, whatever it is, even if it's something that rubs you the wrong way, primarily so that you can accept it, so that you can let go of whatever emotional charge, particularly a negative charge, you have attached to it. Because not only is that good for whoever it is you've been judging, because now you're going to stop judging, it's good for yourself, because you're going to take that charge away that's been kind of holding you back. Well, you know what? There's, there's actually a couple of great access consciousness product um, processes. Like, you know, the one, the one of course is always, does this belong to me? Like when you start getting triggered by someone, mm -hmm. you could just be picking up on other people's energy. Does this belong to me? And, and when you feel like, no, that's not mine, you can just send, send it back with consciousness. But another part of that is interesting point of view, right? So it's like, oh, interesting point of view. They have that point of view. When it, when it really bugs you, you can just keep saying interesting point of view. They have that point of view. And you'll notice as you say it a few times, I do it all the time now, the energy breaks. Mm -hmm. Right. You can add to it. And this one's really been working for me. Interesting point of view. They have that point of view. Interesting point of view. I have a point of view about them having that point of view. When you do that one and repeat that one for a while, I had to do it a few yeah. times. Some stuff my mother was saying, and I'm like, okay. I did an interesting point of view. She has that point of view and it wasn't clearing it enough. So I'm like, okay, interesting point of view. I have a point of view about her having that point of view. And <laughs> all the energy blasted out. Wow. Know? So well, just you, that. just you saying it is like, you can feel it, right? Say that 10 times fast. Yeah. <laughs> you say it after a few times and you're like, you, the energy just really just dissipates. Yeah. It's like, all right, why can't, you know, Isn't I that just, interesting. People don't agree with, or they might think I'm crazy. So, if I can do it, they can do it. Like, why am I not allowing other people to speak their own truth? Because it doesn't yeah. agree with mine, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. I always look into why it triggers me, though. That's because I want to know what is what is the underlying thing for me. Yeah. You know, because it probably has nothing to do with that person. So for me specifically, and, and we can analyze it, um, for my mom, she'll go into this place of worry, right? Mm. So then she'll, she'll send an energy at me. Because you know what? It makes her feel better. I mean, right. Share my worry. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, and I have to be like, okay, you don't want to put walls up because it makes it bigger. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to allow her to have her point of view. But the thing is, I'm not living there. Right. So I don't, I don't, I really would rather her not keep throwing that at me. Right. And I'm like, mom, old story. You know, I'm not going there. Like, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> so. Right. It's that kind of thing. So I was able to clear that because, you know, and she gets it because then I start trying to teach her some stuff and she'll take so much of it. But you can't make other people change. But you can decide for yourself not to allow their way of being or their energy or their programming of going to worry it doesn't have to be in my in my field. Right. right. Agreed. I, but, but I have to allow her to have it. Otherwise, I'm fighting it again. And that's yeah. in my field. You know, that's the tough part about letting go of something because you let go of it. And if you don't let go of it completely, it comes back. It's like, oh, no, I got to deal with this thing all over again. <laughs> How many times so, does it come back? <laughs> yeah. And, and so simply it could just be 
you're learning to be an acceptance of your mother's point of view. Yeah. That's it. Whether you think she's crazy or not. And that's why this tool has been working a lot. It's like, okay, that's her point of view. You know, I'm gonna, she can yeah. have that. The thing is, it will sometimes bug the hell of me that, that she has to keep giving me that point of view. You know? <laughs> because yeah. we're women, right? And so then I have to be like, all right. She's well, a lot of people, you know, I noticed this with my own family. A lot of people feel like when they're anxious and they have to get something off their chest, they need to tell someone who they think won't judge them and or will allow them to get it off their chest. And, you know, that's when the shield has to come up because normally it's family that, you know, for me anyway, it's family that's going to, um, you know, be upset about something that happened on the news and they know I don't watch the news. Right. So they figure, well, I got some story to tell you because you don't even know what the hell is going on. Cause you don't watch the news, you know, right. and I'm looking at them like, Oh dear God. Okay. And uh, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm listening. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm doing something else. Like I'm, <laughs> my head is someplace else, but I'm letting them go. And when they're done, they just say, thank you so much for letting me get it off my chest. And sometimes that's all they need. Right. And I've learned I'm not taking that on. It's not mine. Right. And then the other thing too is, and, and Rita knows this because we're both Italian, <laughs> at least with my family. When they show you that they're worried, it's like they're telling you, I love you. That's right. I'm so worried for you. I love you so much. Okay, then stop worrying about me and just give me the love. You know, because- yeah. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. They, they, it's true. They think worry is love. Worry is love. That, that's yeah. just programmed into them. I know. Well, it just goes to show there's a lot of people who have a lot of uh, letting go to do. I mean, a lot of letting yeah. go. But that's yep. what's happening right now, which is really cool. Because it's like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we have totally shifted tracks and we're in a whole new world right now. And all that other stuff is like the old world. Mm. So, and I mean, But the struggle is getting people to the new place and leaving the old behind. There's, there's where we're having that, you know, struggle back and forth. People, um, they get set in, you know, like they're used to third dimensional energies. They don't know how to move themselves up in vibration. They're too afraid of it. They don't know what it means. So, and they don't even, they're not even conscious of it. They just know it feels different or it's makes them feel uneasy. And sometimes you have to feel like that in order to shift. You know what I mean? Cause you're clearing out crap. Yeah. But and you know, it's fun. Cause and yeah, I'm like, especially when my mom, I'm like, mom, I'm not in that world anymore. I'm living in the new world. You can come and join me over here if you like. Is that your choice? <laughs> That's the thing. Everybody has a choice. We can right. choose to stay in an old way of being, or we can choose to move into something else. And just and like- it's all energy. It's just energy. That's yeah. it. It's just creating a different perception, and your energy shifts, and you're in that new space. Like I don't want people to think, oh, here's a separate world, and here's a separate world. No, that's not how it's going. But it's going to feel more separate because there are going to be people vibrating at a different level. And you'll what think, you were you're used like, okay, to. They're, they're living in the old dynamic. I'm, you know, and then you're going to gravitate towards those because it right. like, draws like energy. And then hopefully there's enough of this like energy of this higher new dimensional reality that right. others are getting kind of drawn to it. Right. right? Oh, definitely. Like, like, you know, the moth to the light at night, we're holding that light. Sure. Well, what's the phrase? Energy entrains into itself. So yes. here's an example of it. When when energy gets higher vibration, that's just going to draw other energies to it. Yes. It doesn't matter who's holding those energies. It's still going to get drawn to it. That's right. right. So if they hang on, they're going to get drawn there too, whether they want to or not. <laughs> it just goes. Yeah. So here's a good one, and it'll probably switch, shift the conversation a little bit. Number five, take from the earth what is needed and nothing more. Hmm. So how do you perceive that when you hear that? Take what's needed and nothing more. Like, not like taking advantage of, you know, for me, it goes more to like corporations or things like that, that might take or ask too much of the earth or whatever Mm -hmm. their products are or whatever that kind of thing is. Like Mm -hmm. that's where my first, my attention went to personally. Um, I don't feel I ever take more than the earth is willing to give me. And, and I've also been doing this thing where I'm in communion and giving back to the earth. Like, you know, I didn't used to think about that before as far as maybe an individual on the earth. 
Well, I don't know. How does it go with you? Um, I think we've we've done things to the earth that um, have created, you know, um, the soil to be, you know, not not good or fertile anymore. You know, you can tell our fruits and vegetables aren't the best quality because of how they treat the soil. Which comes um, back to corporations and like, you know, industry that are, have taken advantage of or taken too much from. Yeah. You know, spraying the ground with things that there's a way to create um, a balance with nature that you don't have to do all of that with. People aren't aware of that, but you know, when, when it comes to money, they want to make more money. So they're using products that they can, you know, rapidly, you know, you know, make things that people could buy and all of that. But um, there's an interesting book called Behave as if the life in all, behave as if, wait, behave as if the God in all life mattered. I believe that's it by Michelle Wright. She goes on to talk about, she has, um, do you know Paralandra? Yes. So she's, she is the woman that created Paralandra. And so she talks about how to co-create with mother earth, with the soil, but even in your homes, in your place of business. And there's like contracts that you make with um, yourself and whatever you're trying to create. And, you know, she gave an example of even bugs that, you know, when people are, um, creating vegetables and fruits and all that farmers and everything when there's bugs that are eating your, um, your plants and vegetation or the animals that are feeding off of that, what can you do? There's, there's really things that you can do that have nothing to do with pesticides, herbicides, any of that. Um, she goes on to describe how you can do that in a very, um, the, the Native Americans would love her because she does it in a way that can't hurt anyone. It doesn't take away from anything, anyone. It only provides a solution um, that that you can use to get rid of the bugs, to co-create, almost co-create a relationship with the bugs, you know, so that they won't eat your vegetation, that kind of thing. So a very, very awesome book if anybody wants to read that. I, I actually went and saw her, you know, saw, uh, where is she? I think she's, I want to say she's in Virginia, but anyway, it, amazing her, her space. What, what was her last, her, her first and last name again? Uh, Michelle Wright. Michelle Wright. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure I get that into the notes. And she connects to the great spirit. I mean, that's how she's, you know, she, she does her work and she came from, boy, when you read her story, you know, she's been through a lot and has gotten to this place of such beauty and peace and was able to work with the land um, to help others. I, I have to admit, I come a little bit from a slightly different direction on this particular point, not dramatically so, but I just don't look at, the, at it as a problem anymore. I look at it as something that's been happening, but I move away from it. And I know that as I move away from it, I take my own vibration away from it and that starts to shift things. So for instance, you mentioned food that uh, doesn't taste like food anymore. We make it a point to buy um, locally grown food only because it tastes better. Heirloom yeah. tomatoes taste better than store-bought tomatoes. You know, Absolutely. Peppers taste better. Local everything. I mean, just name the vegetable. It tastes better because they're growing it more naturally. They're just growing it the way it's supposed to grow. Right. And, I think that's really the whole solution. I mean, I don't really worry about what corporations are doing because all I know is all I have to do is take my attention away and I have just moved energy away. The more people who do that, have, the corporations eventually have to react. They, 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 yes, they don't control supply us. and demand. They're going to they, they're they have to respond to what the, the buyers are doing. If the buyers keep buying junky food, they're going to keep giving them junky food. If right. buyers say, you know, I'm done with junky food, the corporations are saying, whoops, we got to change our business model here. Yeah. Well, you could see that more people are, are wanting organic, more people want no hormones, no antibiotics, you know, no pesticides, all of that non GMO, mm -hmm. which was huge. Um, you know, and then that, that started to shift as well. Um, so yeah, we're, 
It, it, it's Michaela Wright, right? Is that right? Her, her I, I, I don't know if she said, if it's Michelle or Mikael or, but yeah, that's it. It's Mikael or Mikael. I don't know how she's saying it. How does she, uh, how does she spell it? It's P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A. Paralandra. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about her name. How do her you name, spell yeah. her name? Oh, M-A-C-H-A-E-L-L-E. Right. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So he has everything on there. Uh, human health, animal care, soil, yep. less, environmental gardening. I got to look there because I'm... Oh, I'm telling you, you're going to love it. Behaving as if the God in all life mattered. Yeah. Fascinating. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, no, my my pen just ran out. I need another organic pen. <laughs> ah, hurry up. Uh, no big deal. Yeah, I, I, I know that there's been a lot of um, attention given, particularly during my lifetime, to environmental concerns and so forth. And as I became more aware of how law of attraction worked, I really became very clear on how my own views had kind of shifted toward that understanding because so much of what has been done over the years has been about being pushing against, pushing against, you know, the earth being treated badly, pushing against uh, species being wiped out, pushing against climate change, pushing against, pushing against, pushing, it's all pushing against. And I, I realized through LOA teaching that, no wonder it hasn't improved in that sense because they're pushing against. But right. when I think in terms of what I prefer instead, well, first of all, it feels a lot better. I mean, I, I think in terms of having clean water, clean air, we, we experienced this during COVID, especially people living in urban areas saw the skies clean up just because there were, you know, fewer vehicles on the road, few, there, there was less uh, stuff being burned. It's like, oh, we like that. That feels mm -hmm. good. You know, that that's yeah. a much more powerful um object, if you will, object of change, then all the pushing against in the world is going to be simply because yeah. I like that. I want that. And all we have to do is just apply the same kind of principle to the various other aspects of environmental issues. Just what yeah. do we prefer instead? Yeah. So should we go to number six? Sure. sure. Do what needs to be done for the good of the all. I love it. <laughs> I love that. That's encompassing every single person. Whenever you're, you know, making decisions, whenever you're um, going to do a project and, you know, you think, how can I help the greater good? No matter what it is, doesn't matter, really matter what it is. It's what's going to serve everyone, um, which to me is all inclusive and I love it. <laughs> right. So what is this? How does, you know, you can ask questions like, how does this generate more good in the world or is this? The generative thing for me to engage in, you know, because uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of asking questions and feeling in my body if I get a yes or a no. So. Yeah. And, you know, you people can judge it like uh, I don't mean it like judge, but I mean, people can see how they feel. I think your body tells you everything if right. you allow it to, you know, so and I think it's important when you're talking about anything serving not just you but others and it's not coming from a selfish perspective it's just more of you know because what you do on a daily basis affects you don't realize how your energy affects the rest of the world so do you want to be negative all day long and right. have that go into the universe and the world or you know so think about that because you you're affecting you know it's a ripple effect that's, that's the bottom line. Bring that up because really that's a gift right there. When you can find ways to be in your joy and to be in that higher vibe and to do things that lighten you up, that energy that you be is contributing and generating more for the world. Right. It doesn't have to be that, uh, okay, if I do, if I buy this car, will that support the earth? <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> it doesn't have to be that big. It's like, it's just like, if, if it brings you joy and it makes things go easy for you, that it's carrying a lighter energy. It's good. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's always yeah. been my motivation with the podcast. I, I hoped all along that what we talk about here helped people who chose to listen, but I didn't know that. I didn't know exactly how it would help them. Um, yeah. But I love the fact that all 
I have to do, all we have to do is just focus on the fact that we're enjoying doing this. We're enjoying talking about this. It feels good. Right. I love doing, I do this five days a week because it feels so darn good. And right. that alone is going to help in ways that I don't even see. Right. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. I mean, that way I don't even have to figure out exactly how I'm going to help. All I have to do is just feel good and it's going to help. Right. And it goes past the five, six hundred, eight hundred thousand people who listen to the show. It goes yeah. past that because it goes out to everything's energy. Mm -hmm. So it goes out into the universe. Speaking of which, I want to make sure I mention, um, I was hoping that the app was going to be released today, the LOA Today app that people can listen to the podcast. What I can announce is the app itself is done. I actually finished that part of the job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey. The part that's still to be done, and I was starting to work on that today, is uh, it has to be kind of divided into five different pieces. I have the web piece right now, but they're oh, all five. Wait, stop. I want you to pat yourself on the shoulder. Come on, well, give yourself some. I, I'm yeah, going to pat yeah, this yeah. one, yeah, and I'm going to pat yeah. this one. I'm going to raise my high arms five. in the air, celebrate, high uh, five. Yes, high ten. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Um, but the only thing left at this point is I have to split it out so that iPhones can have their version and Androids can have their version. Right. And Macs can have their version and PCs Can't can wait. have their version in addition to the web version. So that's yeah. the last task. But yeah. I'm hoping that that will wound wow. up in the next couple of days. So hopefully, if, if you're not hearing this episode within 24 hours, hopefully by the time you hear this, you'll be able to go right to the Play Store on an Android or the App Store on an iPhone and download the LOA Today app and start listening to the podcast there. That's beautiful. Well, do you recall when the idea hit you, like when it dropped in? Like, do you remember the energy you felt? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. No, it was in May. It, I mean, it was a month ago, literally. But how did you, can you recall how you felt? Like, where were you or how did the idea drop? Did it just pop in or like? Well, the idea has been in my mind pretty much since I started the podcast. Okay. Um, the difficulty, the challenge is in actually finding somebody to write it and to write it the way I wanted to write it. I mean, you can find apps out there that are like off the shelf that will give you some of what I wanted to do. Right. But I wanted it to, to do certain things in certain ways. I wanted to make it custom built to exactly what we do here on the show. I wanted okay. to be perfect to that. I wanted to include not only the ability to play the episodes, um, I want to provide that live stream chat room that we currently use on YouTube. I want that to be, to be part of the app that's going to be in version two. It's not in version one, but it will be part of it. I want people to actually be able to see the live stream on the app while we're live streaming. I want people yeah. to be able to send feedback through the app to us so that we can, you know, we ask somebody to say, you know, well, tell us about this manifestation you had so they can send manifestation stories through the app. I mean, I want all this kind of activity to go on through the app. And yeah. I didn't, I couldn't find any apps that would do everything that I wanted it to do. So that's what held me off for so long. But you guys actually helped give me a little bit of a push about two or three weeks ago because I, I'd been kind of toying around with it and, and, you know, just noodling how the whole thing worked. And I said, well, it's going to be a few months before this happened. And you said, why does it have to be a few months? Why not a few days? Get your ass into gear. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the three of us. Walt's talking. He's so lit up. Oh my God. He couldn't see us, but I'm like big smile. And Rita's like big smile <laughs> because the energy just was like. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. You can see his whole aura is just beaming. But, yeah. Well, it, it feeds into what we were just talking about. This is my way to, of, of like expanding the whole thing of just putting out something that's good and, and knowing that in some way other people are going to benefit from it. That's right. And that it's going to help reach more and more people so that more and more people can get more benefit out of it. Yeah. I love that idea. I mean, that, that stoked me from day one that that could even be possible. I didn't know how it was going to happen when I first started this thing. Yeah. I, I knew it was possible. And That's the beauty of it. Not even knowing it's like you just, it unfolds as it goes and it, you yeah. know, it creates its own story. <laughs> it's no, you know? no kidding. Yeah. And I don't even know what that story is <laughs> until it happens. That's it. That's it. Who knew what we were doing today to like watch that movie? Right. <laughs> we just, here it is. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, so anyway, that's, that's the long way of saying we still want you to subscribe, but now you can just look for the LOA Today app because once this thing gets released, that's going to be the way to subscribe from now on. Cause yeah. Great. Everything's going to happen on the app. That's it. What Rita awesome. did for you, Walt, was to inspire a question within you. And that question was, okay, how can I get this done faster? Boom. Mm -hmm. There and it is. Now receive. Yeah, the question was actually there, but what you did was brought it, you brought it to the surface. You made it really clear, like, yes, I know that that's the question, but where's the answer? 
What's or maybe you need a solution to What's allow that, or to yeah, yeah, to yeah. into the energy of the, of the possibility of it. Exactly, and and it wasn't. It, uh, this is a key point that we've talked about on the show previously: focusing on solutions rather than problems. I, I mean, this is a story that I've told many, many times with a variety of different projects of my own, how I kept focusing on problems and all I got was more problems. I focused on more problems and I got more problems. And then I finally focused on solutions and solutions came. But, oh, well, geez, why didn't I do that before? Right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, I, I had to get past the, the, what the, the problem old, was and say, what's the solution? There's got to be a solution here somewhere. That's the old paradigm, right? That's right. Yeah. It's over. That's okay. it. Let's go to number, uh, what is it? Seven. Seven, I think. Give constant thanks to the great spirit for each new day. And you know what? If you wake up and do that each day, you, and, and before you go to bed, like in the morning, it just feel better. It just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just allows you to like step into. Oh, yeah. Gratitude is like the quickest way to get out of any funk that you're in. You start thinking of all the good things that are in your life and all and giving thanks and praising and this and that, you know, it's, it's like, it, I, I think about, um, I love those gospel songs, you know, where like a group of people are in a room and they're praising and this and that. I mean, the energy is palpable, right? Mm. So you could do that with music. You can do that running around the house, singing it and whatever it is. And it just lifts you instantly instantly yeah the powerful I, I thing was, and when i was outside today and i'm walking around and talking to the earth yeah like even to, i'm just like really grateful to to be alive now especially now when there's these we're just switching tracks and we're moving into a whole new way of being right there's be a lot of cool stuff happening a wow. lot of cool stuff yeah Amongst all the other stuff, we're seeing the cool stuff that's happening. Yeah. And we want to open people up to that because we don't want people focusing on, you know, the negativity that's coming across, you know, on the news and whatever else you're watching. Because that's, you're never going to know 100% the truth the news of any of it. It's designed to keep you small and in fear. But when you just disregard that, and you catch this wave of this energy, you can lose that. Yeah. Unfortunately, they want to control us and have us be stuck, at least those in majorly in charge of the whole thing, you know. Um, I don't want to go off on a whole thing. Yeah, right. Let's right. That's a huge no, save that for another. <laughs> yeah. We'll lose uh, track of the commandments here. That's <laughs> so, yeah. But that's where I'm going because I'm like shh, old dynamic, new one. It's like things are changing. But, but my point is there's stuff happening that isn't being reported on because of course. they want to keep us in the fear still as long as they can. You know, they want to get I mean, you know, what, vaccines. I'm not getting you're going to have to put me in jail. I'm not getting a vaccine. No, I think the vaccine vaccines are not years and years. Bullshit. I think the pandemic was bullshit. The COVID was real. But right. it's not, it doesn't didn't warrant a pandemic. But anyway, that's yeah, that's another. <laughs> that pull is just amazing. But the cool part is we're shifting so strongly that it's getting to the point where it's almost like. Do you guys see the same thing? I, for me, it's like it's fading. That old stuff is fading away. It's gone. It's that's it. It's, it's over, so Johnny. It's over. Walk around. I'm like, I'm like, oh, a whole new reality. I'm like, like a little kid. The yeah. energy that we be, if you just we've allow been, to be. We've been hearing about this for years and years, and mm. it's finally here. Yeah. It's finally yeah. here. I remember hearing about this before I even mm -hmm. bought into the whole LOA thing. Back when my sister, who was into this long before I was, was talking about it, uh, talking about it in a way that made me think like our friend, uh, Chief Harold Pet. He would say, you know, it's all that hippie shit, except my term for it wasn't as polite. But <laughs> I remember hearing about it and it kind of stuck in the back of my mind. So even though I was pretty resistant at that time, it was it was kind of spinning around back there. And then right. I had my own awareness, my own waking up to um, what the whole LOA message was. And it just kind of came out again very gently. It wasn't like any kind of a struggle that went on. It just kind of came out. And almost without me even doing anything deliberate, it just kind—I of, just kind of shifted. 
it's not like I, I'm going to wake up this morning and shift. No, it wasn't like that. It right. was trying to shift over time just because you do. Yeah. It doesn't take any effort. You as, just far, do. as far as two parallel peck goes, when he says hippie shit now, it's very endearing. Like, oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. And that was never, ever his reality. He got blasted with that reality the day he had that loaded gun in his mouth and didn't even realize it was loaded and just about right. killed himself and had that whole experience with, with the light. Yeah. So now it's like, like he, you know, he just shifted the paradigms right there and then. That's yeah. it. Yeah. But he kept the terminology. And like you said, he. No, but now the terminology is endearing. When he says right. shit, it's endearing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a way of, of communicating because he still has his, his old friendships primarily from the military. You know, how is he going to communicate to them? Is he going to change the way he talks to them? No, of course not. But that's why he could say it in a different way and they can feel the energy of that. Right. So now it's right. like, oh, you should. It's okay for cheap to have hippie shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. True. Yeah. You can be all hippie shitted out. I can too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Right. Can we do another number? Yeah. What are we up to? Number eight. eight. Speak the truth, but only of the good in others. Speak uh, the truth, but only of the good in others. Right. I think I'd amend that a little bit. I wouldn't say only because I would also speak of the good in, my, in myself too. I, I speak in the good of the good in everything and everyone, not just others, but everything. Because I'm part of it too. Everything is a mirror. If you're talking about the good in others, then that includes you. Yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't exactly. know. yeah, I, I think that, um, again, that leaves out all judgment, all, you know, every, everything we were talking about before, you know, just, um, I like, um, you, you ever read the four agreements? Uh, yes, I don't remember. Four agreements, and now they, and I think they have a fifth one now. Uh, the Four Agreements was a, a phenomenal uh, book. A small, quick read, but the Four Agreements themselves, um, it, it it's just it pertains to how to live an authentic life, you know, and you know, speaking the truth and um, and seeing, you know, and speaking of the good in others only comes back good to you you know it's like it's like anything else but yeah have, have you heard of it walt, walt? i've heard or, of it I, I did not read it but i have heard of it okay i can read them too i just found something should we do go. it sure. yeah go so i've got my ipad on the side i can do just... <laughs> right. so for the first one it says be impeccable with your word there it is a speak with integrity b say only what you mean c Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to there gossip go. about others. Yeah. B, use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. There it is. Number there one. There it is. Yeah. Should I read the rest? Yeah. What is it? Three more? Yeah. Go ahead. We're not long. Number two, don't take anything personally. Ah, and, I love it. A, nothing others do is because of you. Yeah, that's a good one. Right? No. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. Right. And see, when you are immune to the uh, to the options and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. So that that's talking about taking out the judgment part. Beautiful. Right? That's why I love the book. Go ahead. Number three, don't make assumptions. A, find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. B, communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. And C, with just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And number four, always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to when you're sick. Yeah, we know that, right? High mm -hmm. energy, low energy. Um, and B is under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Okay. I'm telling you, this could be a whole podcast in itself, the four <laughs> agreements. It's unbelievable. They're, they're, it's just a great little book if anybody is um, – interested in that um i can't remember what's the guy's name uh let me find I'm, right now i'm in images let me go back one second all right I'll that's okay 
Well, while you're doing that, I just wanted to comment on something regarding um, that point eight that we read from Ten Commandments that speak the truth, but only of the good in others. I, I want to modify one word. Yeah. Um, I want to speak your truth, the one that's internal, the one that comes from the heart. Right. That's it, it isn't so much that truth is objective. It's that it comes from within. It's yeah. A, it, it's a subjective experience that each one of us has. Right. And, and learning to be true to that internal feeling, that internal message is how we end up doing what it talks about. Yep. I agree with that. It's 100%. Like Don Miguel, Miguel Ruiz. Yes, Don Miguel Ruiz, right. I'll write that one down. 899 on audiobook. I'm on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got for number nine? Okay, let me go back there. Hold on a second. Number nine. Follow the rhythms of nature, rise and retire with the sun. That's a hard one for me. <laughs> <laughs> but the rhythm that. one, we, we got, remember, we had that rock story, right? Where the water just knows how to go through the rocks and the things to get to the river and all mm -hmm. that, right? I mean, when you, when you go with the rhythm of even our own bodies have a rhythm, an internal clock and rhythm, right? Um, so it says rise and... It says rise and retire with the sun. Yeah, that's tough, right? especially in the yeah. summer. I stay up really late, and if I can sleep late, I'm sleeping late. Uh, in the in the winter, it's easier for me than in the summer because it's so much lighter, longer. But um, yeah, but who can retire at four thirty in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can get in bed at four thirty. Yeah, I'm, I'm alright. Sleep maybe retire means to chill. Yeah, rest. I can do that. Rest. <laughs> Chilling in the winter and the cold, that makes sense, you know. <laughs> Body actually, you know, regenerates itself between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So mm. if, if you could even sleep good in those four hours, at least the body regenerates itself. When you go to sleep later or um, you wake up earlier or whatever, the body just doesn't have a chance to reboot, we'll say. It's funny because I actually find myself largely doing what this says without intention. Right. I, I just tend to do that. Louise and I both tend to do that. I mean, last night was a little bit of an exception, but quite honestly, it's because I wanted to finish the app and I stayed up to finish the app for a bit. But even then, I, I think I stayed up like an hour past sundown. I mean, an hour and a half past sun. It wasn't real late, you know? Right, right. right. It, it, it just feels to me, win, winter is actually a little bit of a challenge for me just because the daylight hours are shorter. So I, there, there's more of a tendency to stay you know, wrapped up in bed, which is nice in a sense, but it also is what I would call a comfort zone. And I try not to spend too much time in comfort zones because I don't break out very well if I stay there too long. <laughs> 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 so I like to break out, you know, I like, and during the winter time, it's a little more challenging to do it. Summertime, it's easy. Cause there's yeah, so sure. You have more energy. Yeah, I mean, Naturally, daylight starts at like 4.35 right. in the morning. It goes to like 9 o'clock at night at this time of year. It's like, oh, geez, well, I can go with that. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. That's easy. Yeah. But, so the yeah. last one, number 10, enjoy life's journey, but leave no tracks. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. That was the one I was like, hmm. Enjoy life's journey. I've got that tattooed on my foot because I used to you be really? Yeah, it has a butterfly, enjoy the journey. Wow. Because um, I used to be more like this A to B. Like I, I knew something, I had to get it done and to do it. But I wasn't taking time to like enjoy the process in the middle of all that. It was all just do, 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 right? But then you're not really experiencing very much. You're really limiting yourself. So right. that was my reminder of... Um, I, somehow I think I might have got it from Abraham Hicks somewhere like early on in my, my first start, started studying that. I haven't sat too long time. Um, yeah, and then I realized that about myself. So that's on my foot so I can remind myself. I remember one right. time I was, being, I was being coached by a coach when I was in the coaching academy. And we had their like swap sessions and stuff. And I think I was stuck in something. And she goes, Linda, stop everything. Stop talking. I want you to look at your foot. <laughs> <laughs> like oh okay yeah i remember now <laughs> you got a nice reminder Do you know i had the tattoo she's like and i never even realized i put it on my foot i didn't put it in my foot because the journey might be the steps you're taking through your life it just went there yeah and she's like 
this is the person who made me think that she goes, you have it on your foot because you want to enjoy it every step of your life, right? I'm like, that's really clever. I wish I would have done that. <laughs> well, it was an unintentional <laughs> intention is what it was. Jared told me, put it on your foot. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Enjoying life's journey has another uh, odd, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Consequence sounds negative. Um, something that goes along with it. An additional thing that it's kind of an unexpected piece that goes along with it. Cause the more that you enjoy life's journey, the more you get odd looks from people. Like they notice the energy. Cause, I, yeah. cause it's not normal. You're supposed to be in worry, doubt and fear. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you so happy about? Exactly. And then, and then the, the other odd thing that happens is they smile at you. Yeah. The, the, and then they, all, they walk away and go, what just happened? What was that? Yeah. <laughs> smiles are like yawns. They're, in, they're contagious. They but certainly yeah. are. What about the, but leave no tracks part of this? Yeah. I don't, you know, that's the only piece that I'm not clear about, you know? Well, I, th I think there are a couple of ways to look at that phrase. I think in one way we do leave tracks and the tracks are the, the contributive legacies. I mean, we, right. Hans Abraham says that we come into this life to uh, create expansion. That's the tracks. So right. we leave those kinds of tracks behind the kind of tracks that I think they're talking about here, a number of native American clans. And I'm, I'm thinking particularly of Iroquois because I'm somewhat familiar with the Iroquois um, believed that you leaving no tracks meant if you use a site, leave it the way you came to it. Leave it in its oh. natural state. Don't leave it trashed. I understand that. Leave, leave okay. it in, in, in the pristine uh, state that it was in when you got there. Got I it. think that's what they mean by not leaving tracks. Well, I just had, remember that old commercial with the, the the Native American and he's looking at the trash and he's got the tear coming down his face. Right? It was like an anti -medical. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. That one. Right. That? Yeah. yeah, that was a while back too. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of recall that as... Uh, I, I I was schooled in, in Iroquois um, lore because my father was very much into it. And so, I, I, I mean, I can't say I'm an expert. Certainly, the members of the, of the various tribes are much more expert than I am. I can promise you that. But I learned enough to really appreciate what my dad appreciated. I mean, I think I mentioned last week, one of my dad's favorite phrases was, don't judge a person until you've walked a mile on his moccasins. That came from that same tradition. Right. And, the tradition of truly of respect. I mean, literally all of these so-called 10 Native American 10 commandments that as this thing is labeled, they're really just variations on respect. Respect yeah. for ourselves, respect for the earth, respect for other people, respect for life, right. respect for everything. That's right. It's a beautiful thing. Thank yeah. you for clarifying that, Walt. Yeah. No, really, because I, I wouldn't have, I, I didn't really understand that until you said it. Oh, the, uh, that makes no total tracks. sense. Yeah. Makes yeah. total sense. It's all in the context, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that, that context makes a big difference. I mean, it, the more that we respect where we are, what we do, who we interact with, the more we, in that sense, not leave tracks behind. And, ironically enough, the more we leave the other kinds of tracks behind, the right. legacy kinds of tracks. Yep. So there are tracks and there are tracks. <laughs> there are. <laughs> now what track do you want to be on and how are you going, going That's to right. your journey? That's right. Perfect. I mean, we, we can have fun with that one. You have railroad tracks, right? You come to uh, a Y and, and you have one track going off one direction, one track going off in the other direction. Which track are you going to follow? You know? That's it. And that's the, what's happening right now. We're switching tracks from this old way of struggle yep. to this way of ease. Interestingly yes. enough, too, most of those uh, those branches on, on railroads, there's one track that leads to the main track, and the, the other track goes to a siding. Do you really want to end up on a siding? <laughs> right. You want to stay on the main track. That's where everything's happening. There you go. There you go. We can go with these metaphors forever. Unfortunately, <laughs> we don't have forever because we're out of uh, time for the hour that we have here. But this has been good. That, this is a good one to pick up on. I, I, yeah. I'm glad you thought of this bringing it onto the show. Awesome. Well, thanks. For What's up, that. Linda? You had a. I, I, I was going to say, I'm not going to be able to be here next week. <laughs> so. oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No problem. We'll miss you, but you'll be back next time, and that'll be good. Yes. Yeah. Look forward to that. In the meantime, next week, Rita and I will have a good conversation about we don't know what yet. Yes, we will figure it out. We will. We're good at that, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs>
So good stuff, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, live streamers. Thank you especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.